this. Thank you. So th this presentation is about the project that we ran on Utrecht University. And this is part of a larger uh, project run by SETI Institute in California by uh, Jonathan um, uh, um, who uh, developed as an artist at SETI Institute uh, this project called the Library of the Great Silence. And uh, the Library of the Great Silence refers to uh, the great silence of the Fermi paradox, which says that uh, it's uh, unusual that we don't see any technical civilizations around us. And why is that? And uh, the Library of the Great Silence would be a collection of objects that are displayed on a so-called visitor center of the Earth for alien, space alien visitors who may study how terrestrial civilization developed in these years. And this might uh, have, this might explain, uh, these objects might include some explanation on, on um, a potential extinction of humanity or or if we survive on how we survive this uh, great future. I'm so sorry for interrupting you, but have you changed your slide or not? Because we can, if you move to your slides, we can see it. Well, I'm at framework, framework. Yes, now we can see it. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Uh, so that's the background. Uh, the uh, METI called uh, Messaging to Extraterrestrial Intelligences. And uh, so far, uh, these messages were basically messages of uh, data about us, our knowledge, what we know about the universe, what we know about uh, Earth and uh, chemicals and so on. So we decided to change this kind of uh, message to a more hum human perspective of how we see things, uh, how we experience things. And uh, with, with that, we moved this project to classrooms for uh, giving the students a new perspective of the everyday objects that they see around us, they, the social phenomenon they, they see around us, to have an external view a, a view from the other's point of view, an external perspective, like the alien space aliens would have an external perspective of uh, what's going on on Earth. They don't know the context that we know. They don't know human culture. So we give the students this opportunity to think about the space aliens viewpoint, but to think about the space aliens viewpoint of their everyday acts, their everyday societies, activities. We created uh, several objects that are platforms of testing these external views of uh, figuring out uh, what is this thing. So we moved, uh, we created this object and we uh, displayed it. Uh, we let the students uh, from elementary schools to, to university student ages to, to try out what they can do with this object to discover this object, to discover the purpose of this object, the, the, ob uh, the uh, rock pieces of this object, and to try to figure out what this object might be if they would find it on the moon, outside the terrestrial uh, world, and how would they use it? If, if it has some use, how would they interact with it? How would they manipulate it? And, uh, uh, eventually, what kind of story this object may tell about the creators of this object. So that's the number one object that's th that we call the Box of Humanity. You can see it's uh, like a um, room that you, an escape room that you may try to find out uh, how it works. And there are several pieces that may have, uh, have a clue on how we should manipulate it. So there is a good solution and there is a bad solution, of course, from our point of view, but from the alien point of view, it's the same, basically. It's just the experience that gives them to manipulate it. So the goal is to, for the space aliens to become humans in this way, that they, they try to figure out the same way as we do what this object may be and how it works.
The second object is a Christmas tree with uh, small uh, plastic containers that contain something within. Usually you find it in hotels or airports that they give you as, as uh, some everyday objects that you may need during your stay in, in the airplane or in the hotel. But these are very variable uh, objects, but still they are uniform in a way that they are packed uh, hermetically in a plastic bag and they show you a variety of activities the humans may have been with the, this object. So it's quite redundant, but still that's the point that the redundancy gives you the opportunity to discover it different way, in many different ways. So it's again an object to explore. And the final object that was uh, created by an artist is uh, a, a field of mosses and uh, these small plants together with uh, technological switches, technological uh, connectors. And the um, interesting dilemma it poses for the user if they should water it or not. Because if they water it, the plants will, will survive, but the, of course the, the technical equipment will be rusted and it will be ruined. So either, either decision is, is a bad decision, bad decision, but still they should decide. And that tries to communicate the dilemma humanity faces now, the technology versus nature dilemma. So again, to give an experience by, by seeing this dilemma of what humans, uh, what the dilemma for humans was at the beginning of the 21st century on this planet. And the project was supported by TeenLab at Alta. Thank you for your attention. And sorry for the camera, it, it, for some reason it doesn't work. So that's the project. Okay, now I cannot hear anything. I cannot hear, okay. And now? Yeah, it's good, now it's good. Okay. Oh, okay, so it was weird. Okay, so I have a, you have two questions on the chat. Can you see the chat? Yes. Okay, so first question should be from Ryan Kirby. Uh, yeah, how many students have you had interacted? Yeah, at, at elementary school, I had uh, some 30 students, one class at, uh, uh, the, they were at fourth class and uh, nine, nine to 10 years old and they were the most excited about the project. And interestingly, they had the most, uh, most clever responses and, and the most interesting uh, new problems they posed and, and improvement proposals. So it was quite strange to see that the youngest audience is the most creative in many ways interacting with, this, with these objects. And then we had several groups from uh, the university and uh, my students who studied planetary science, interestingly, they, were, they, they also had good ideas, but not as good as the nine years old. And we had adult uh, groups as well uh, from, open, from open, open Science Day, we call it. They were invited to the university. So in total, about 100 persons were, um, you, uh, were interacting as a test with these objects. And the second is what other moral questions can these experiments present? Well, the, 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 the basic question is otherness, to, to acknowledge that uh, other people may see the world or may see our group differently from us. And that's quite a, a um, important political questions nowadays in, in this part of the world, well, any part of the world, of course, to, to learn to accept other perspectives on our everyday behavior, on our, on our norms, on our social norms that are just norms and not uh, absolute uh, positive or negative things in the world. So that, that's, a, that's the basic moral question here.
And I don't see any other questions. Oh yes, there is one. Oh, oh, there, there. Yes, because because I was writing. Oh, so it's <laughs> one more question also from Ryan. Yeah, how did you decide the objects for the books? It was a half year long uh, discussion between five different departments at the university, from artists to social scientists to media scientists. Uh, um, in other uh, departments, so we had uh, we had really uh, several long discussions on first finding out what our purpose may be with this new. So the basic goal was to create some new kind of message, and uh, that can be also used for for presenting in classrooms. And that was the, the basic uh, uh, background that uh, we want to we want to give the human experience for the for the ones who interact with uh, it, it should be an, an object of interaction so it, it was a result of a long discussion have you tried to work with groups with people older than yes yes like i said uh, we had adult groups during the open science day and uh, they had a little bit different uh, uh, ways of interacting we we tried to in, uh, to give them an opportunity to interact with these objects in total darkness to simulate an alien perspective who has no vision. And it was very interesting to see those results as well. And that's it. Oh, it, it, was, it was really amazing. So uh, I would really like to uh, take part in, in these classes. So uh, the next presentation. Sorry, uh, have you had any other questions? Because theoretically, we still have a time. If not, we can move to other uh, other presentation. Okay, so ten seconds left. So I'm gonna kick you.